Welcome. Thank you for joining us at Huawei Industrial Digital Transformation Conference 2021. Today we're going to focus on transportation. More specifically, we're going to look at comprehensive transportation and how it leads the way to a digital world. 2020 proved a challenging year for the industry, with the aviation sector particularly hard hit by the pandemic. Yet as a whole, transportation proved its resilience and demonstrated its agility in keeping the critical wheels of global commerce rolling. To do this, the industry turned to information and communications technology in search of solutions. Against this backdrop, what then is the path forward for transportation in 2021 and beyond? To get us started, let's hand over to Frédéric Giron, Vice President and Research Director at consultant firm Forrester, to explore precisely what digitalization means for transportation. Hi. Welcome. My name is Fred Giron. I'm a Vice President and Research Director at Forrester. And I'm excited to welcome you today to talk about digital transformation in the transportation industry. We have recently uh, done a very exciting piece of work for Huawei around um, you know, the digital transformation and, uh, of transportation uh, companies and, and how they are actually working towards this shared vision of comprehensive transportation. So I'm going to walk you through some of the results of this survey, uh, trying to understand the trends and the challenges uh, that uh, these firms are facing as part of their transformation. But before we start, I also wanted to give you a little bit of a, an overview of some of the trends that we're seeing in the transportation industry. And really starting to think about how this transformation has started. And at Forrester, we believe that uh, organizations are in what we call the age of the customer. And in this age of the customer, empowered customers wield digital tools and services and have garnered significant power over institutions. While in the past, customers were forced to uh, participate in businesses, uh, business processes, uh, today and tomorrow, increasingly, businesses will be forced to move towards customers and participate in their journey. And this is something that we're already seeing in the personal mobility space. Uh, consumers are armed with digital tools and they are disrupting the traditional industries like automotive industry and allowing the inception the creation of new transportation models like mobility as a service. And what's interesting is that these customer-centric transportation models also promise to address some of the traditional transportation ailments around pollution, traffic congestion, accidents that are typically associated with our modern urban environments. And the, the idea here is that the combination of and integration of digital technologies such as cloud, mobile devices, mobile apps, sensors, machine learning, next generation mapping software, all have the power to both create a much better transportation experience for customers and passengers, as well as drive significant operational improvements, both in terms of improved efficiency, like cost savings, or as well as improved effectiveness, like lower carbon footprint, or better asset utilization, reduced waste. We're already seeing uh, and also seeing similar shifts happening in the business to business world, in the B2B world, for instance, in the shipping industry. Their customers demand more predictability, more transparency in the service delivered by ocean carriers, for instance. The COVID-19 crisis, as you know, has also uh, revealed some of the weaknesses of supply chain networks that have been in the past optimized for cost and now need to be rethought for resilience. And in such complex network ecosystem, multiple stakeholders with a fragmented and siloed understanding of data flows offer a significant opportunity for optimization of these flows. Here again, 
Digital technologies such as cloud, AI, blockchain, IoT, 5G hold the promise of a more comprehensive model of transportation that orchestrates and optimizes the flows of data, the flows of freight, of cargo, of uh, people. And in this vision of comprehensive transportation, assets are increasingly utilized optimally. Energy is conserved. Entire flows of digital documents are automated towards a set of shared business and customer outcomes. And more importantly, the trust among participants of this trans transportation ecosystem is strengthened. And it's strengthened by systems that are error-free, that are secure, that are immutable. Now, that might sound, that might sound a little bit utopic, right? But that's because this vision is still years away from being realized. But having said that, we're already seeing, including in the shipping industry, we're already seeing several companies that are working on realizing this vision. And then this vision of comprehensive transformation is also happening at a smaller scale. So for instance, here, I'm based out of Singapore. And in Singapore, in the western part of Singapore, the construction of a comprehensive transportation hub has already started. Similar vision, leveraging integrated modes of transportation in order to improve citizen experience. So think about faster transit, flexible option based on your persona, your traveler's journey. Are you commuting to work or are you enjoying entertainment and shopping options? It's also about improving operational performance like optimizing costs due to better, better prediction of demand and higher uptime due to better asset utilization as well. So you see, you have these two dimensions of digital transformation. One, improving the customer experience, be it B2C or B2B, and two, also improving the, uh, op the performance of the operations. Now, I give you two examples of comprehensive transformation and this vision and how emerging technologies can help uh, enable that vision. But how likely is this vision to be realized? How are business and technology leaders across the globe embracing that vision? What are their plans to adopt some of the emerging technologies that I, I described before? And what are some of the challenges they face as they define the transformation strategy and execute on this plan? These are a lot of the questions that we had on our mind when we started this work um, you know, for Huawei. Uh, and we asked 188 business and technology leaders in late 2020. Um, you know, we surveyed these owners of digital transformation initiatives within different industries like aviation, railway, urban rail, highway, logistics and shipping industry. We also talked to many government agencies um, to understand the challenges and the needs that they have during this transformation journey. So what I want to do now is to take you through uh, some of the main results of this survey. And one of the first thing we wanted to do is validate the, this vision of comprehensive transportation system. Right? Most of the respondents agreed that the future of transportation means breaking down the barriers in between modes of transportation. The goal is to enable end-to-end -end flows of people, end-to-end -end flows of freight, end-to-end -end flows of data. And that means in consumer scenarios, B2C scenarios, providing passengers with a better door-to-door -door travel experience. And in B2B scenarios, this is about providing cargo with a more efficient and predictable end-to-end -end transportation service. So how are we going to achieve that? Well, more than 80% of the leaders we surveyed believe that realizing that vision will require uh, you know, a few things, right? Uh, the first one is uh, a new digital transportation infrastructure that is fully connected across modes of transportation. So the idea is to break down these silos that I was talking about. The second is the end-to-end -end digitization of business processes to enable the intelligent orchestration of transportation services. And last but not least, 
We need a more humanized and convenient intelligent transportation experience. We also wanted to understand what are the key drivers, what are the factors that are driving um, these uh, transformation initiatives, these digital transformation initiatives in the transportation industry. And you can imagine, you know, the first one that came across this uh, survey result is the pandemic. As you know, the COVID-19 epidemic had a significant, um, you know, has significantly restricted uh, people's demand for transportation. And the transportation industry is one of the most severely impacted industry globally. And it, it was interesting to hear from the respondents, and 80%, 87% of them, uh, who said that uh, they believe that their organizations requires more agile solutions with lower innovation costs. The second, I've talked about it in my introduction, customer needs. I mentioned, as, as I mentioned in my introduction, the emergence of new transportation business models is reshaping customers' expectations. Multiple mobility as a service options, convenient digital services have all increased customers' requirement for digital transformation options. We also see that customers' expectations in terms of health and safety have increased due to the COVID-19 crisis. All of these factors are pushing transportation operators to reinvent themselves and to accelerate their digital transformation. The third factor that we looked at is government. And we see the formation of alliances in Canada, in Japan, in the US, the European Union, in China, and all have published guidance for upgrading transportation systems. And in countries like China, Japan, and Singapore here, we've seen a gradual shift from pure infrastructure, construction, investment, to investment that are targeted towards digital innovation, intelligent operation, smart cities, with the help of emerging technologies. And then, of course, the fourth one is technology. 76% of respondents said that the evolution of digital technologies has greatly promoted their digital transformation. For instance, the deployment of cloud computing, IoT, 5G networks will provide a foundation for digital business processes. Data analytics tools provide insights into the business and form the basis for further automation and insight-driven execution. And then the evolution of cloud-native technologies, I'm thinking you know, containers, DevOps, uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery tools, you know, enable the organization to build an uh, application faster, more faster, more flexibly, and uh, to empower the businesses. So the next thing that we wanted to do is to uh, think about uh, the transformation journey of these organizations and, and where are they on this journey. The good news is that most enterprises and organizations have begun their transformation across multiple functions. So they, they don't just approach it from a department perspective, but across the organization. The even better news for me is how they grasp what this transformation really means for their organization. In the past, in the next, uh, in the next one, two, three year, close to half of the respondents expect to achieve some results across functional units, which is a good thing. But the most important thing is that they will also focus on an ongoing iterative cycle. Think about a flywheel of improvement to keep on optimizing the outcomes generated by this transformation. And that's a really important dis distinction that more and more discerning business and technology leaders are making in the transportation industry. Because when you think about it, digital transformation is not your typical technology implementation project. It will impact your entire operating model across strategy, process, talent, metrics, organizational structure, and of course, technology. And quite frankly, there's no end date to this transformation. So the next set of questions we asked was about, you know, where will they focus uh, their digital transformation on and their digital transformation efforts from a technology point of view? Uh, not surprisingly, because we see that across all industries, all sectors, most firms focus on building cloud platforms. Cloud is probably one of the biggest winners of this COVID-19 crisis. 
from a technology point of view. But in the transportation sector, organizations are also building or upgrading their digital transportation uh, infrastructure. Like, you know, for instance, here in Singapore, the government is working on upgrading its highway electronic, electronic toll collection system. Cloud platforms will also be critical to support the improvement of these organizations' data and analytics capabilities with the implementation of enterprise data management platform, for instance. And I'll come back to this point around data in my next few slides. What we see over the next one to three years is that these activities will also remain top priorities. So the sensing, the connectivity, the data processing, the analytics, as well as the operation of these digital platforms will keep most of these organizations very busy. What's also interesting is to look at how the activities that are at the bottom of, of the list today, so not really uh, top priorities for these organizations, how it, the, these will evolve over, over the next one to three years. And here we see more organizations will explore the development and deployment of end-to-end -end digital processes. So think about breaking down the internal silos within the organization of their disconnected, disparate systems and processes. They will also increasingly look outside of the four walls of the organization to build transportation ecosystem. So this is really about creating uh, these comprehensive transportation systems that we are talking about, right? So collaboration in between different modes of transportation, like metro subway operators, collaborating, exchanging data, uh, you know, uh, with road transportation system operators in order to optimize specific outcomes from a business and customer perspective. What's interesting also is that that, point, that that data point gives us a sense of the timing of the next inflection points in terms of creating these comprehensive transportation systems and digital platforms. So the timeline, the timeline is really about the next one, two, three years where we will see acceleration of the creation of such uh, capabilities. And then what we wanted to do is to understand um, what are the key technologies that they are using today and will use in the future uh, you know, in, as part of their digital transformation. And as you can see on this slide, most of the enterprises and organizations have already deployed and will continue to expand the deployment of key technologies like 4G, like public cloud, like software as a service and private cloud, but also um, Internet of Things, optical networks, and many other technologies. Again, we also wanted to understand what are their plans to invest in the future over the next 12 to 18 months on emerging technologies. So things like video analytics, big data, edge computing, AI, machine learning, augmented reality, virtual reality, 5G technologies. About a quarter of the respondents say you know, a fifth to a quarter of the respondents said that they will, they are planning to invest in these emerging technologies over the next 12 to 18 months. But it's interesting to note that this is a limited number of, of organizations, right? Less than a quarter. Uh, so a lot of education about the business value of these emerging technologies, a lot of the education about uh, use cases. How can these emerging technologies can be used in order to solve specific uh, pain points from a customer point of view, for instance, all of that needs to be developed. We also need to work as an industry to uh, develop the required skill set that will be needed to drive a further adoption of these emerging technologies. Okay, this is the last set of, uh, of results I wanted to share with you. And this is probably the most important slide in this deck, um, which is really looking, thinking about what are the most pressing challenges that uh, transportation firms are facing in their digital transformation. The first one is, is not a surprise. Um, this is again, something that we see across uh, organization, across uh, continents, across uh, verticals, which is the organizational structure and the culture of the organization. Digital transformation requires a, unifi a unified digital vision as well as an effective organizational structure and culture to execute on this vision.
The problem is that 73% of organizations in this survey believe that their existing organizational structure can hardly support a comprehensive transformation. And then 65% of organizations believe that they lack a compelling vision for digital transformation. So these are some of the building blocks that they need to start developing first before they actually try and scale their digital transformation efforts. The second challenge is on unrealistic business expectations. Business leaders want to see the results of this transformation tomorrow or, you know, in a very short time frame. Uh, unfortunately, this is highly unlikely. In most cases, firms will have to experiment their way to digital transformation success. The issue here is that there's very few best practices or benchmark exist, if at all. And transportation companies still lack the sufficient data and knowledge of the potential custom, uh, customer and business outcomes of a digital transformation project to support their business case and prove the return on investment, the ROI. So here, what they'll need to do it is to continue, you know, to experiment rapidly and make sure that they leverage, you know, sense giving, storytelling, training to create this consensus within the organization across the different business and technology leaders so that everybody can move forward and um, advance on their uh, digital transformation. The third one is not surprising either, and I was talking uh, to you a minute ago about data, right? And there's still a massive amount of investment and change management to be done around data and insights in these organizations. In fact, most firms that we talk to are still unable to apply data insights to the improvement of operational efficiency, safety, and customer experience, and then learn from these actions. But without this flywheel of insight-driven capability to test and learn from new insights and learn the business and customer value of their digital activities, they will remain stuck in their transformation. And finally, respondent expressed concern regarding emerging technology, about security, of course, but also about the performance and maturity of these emerging technology applications. And uh, also the third one they mentioned is around the compliance issues of going to the cloud and specifically the public cloud. Okay, so how will the transportation industry realize this comprehensive transportation system vision? Well, we need, you know, it will need to happen across all dimensions of business architecture, modes of transportation, and across every phase of the transformation lifecycle. So let's start with the business architecture and starting with the infrastructure digitization. 81% of respondents in our survey told us and suggested that the transportation industry needs to digitize the transportation infrastructure to build capabilities that will sense and connect every signals coming from this infrastructure by applying technologies like radar, intelligent image um, analytics, video analytics, Internet of Things, 5G technologies, right? This is also about business process digitization. And there, enterprises and organizations will apply these technologies to create digital platforms and intelligent solutions that will orchestrate the operations of every participant in this ecosystem, of every stakeholder in the industry, and help optimize their operations against specific customer and business outcomes. Many scenarios, many examples, improve passenger experience in the B2C scenario, improve visibility and management of logistic transportation processes, and improve efficient scheduling of vehicle operations, for instance. And then finally, transformation projects will run through four different stages, design and plan, develop and deploy, operate and maintain, and manage and innovate continuously trying to improve the service, improve the experience of the user for the user of these uh, platforms. Transportation organizations need to plan ahead across the full life cycle all the way to the creation of these digital platforms, business models, and the different value streams that will flow across the stakeholders in this comprehensive transportation 
ecosystem. The good news also is that um, you know, transportation companies will not do this by themselves. And one of the things that we wanted to check is whether uh, and how they will use their partners, in, in particular third-party service providers. Uh, and they told us that they will work, uh, they want to work with uh, third-party service providers to help them across a number of capabilities related to their transformation, like you know, planning and consulting, uh, thinking about feasibility analysis, thinking about uh, establishing roadmaps uh, for this transformation. But it's also about, of course, the availability of mat mat mature technology solutions and mature um, implementation services uh, and the experience that need to come with it uh, to support key use cases. And then ob obviously, you know, firms are also expecting their partners uh, to have a deep understanding of cloud computing, big data, and uh, AI-related skills. Okay, so I wanted to close this session uh, by leaving you with a few key takeaways. First, we have seen that the convergence of rich data, emerging technologies, and strong market forces will drive the rapid digital transformation of the transportation industry. Second, we think that the comprehensive transportation is uh, a vision uh, of the digital transformation of the transportation industry that is already shared by most stakeholders. Third, connectivity, data, digital infrastructure will remain key digital transformation priorities from a technology point of view uh, through 2024. Um, delivering on the digital vision will also, as we uh, explain, uh, will require a holistic approach to the transformation covering transportation infrastructure, business process digitization across multiple modes of transportation. And then, as I said, you know, partners can help transportation firms with the definition of roadmaps that will span the entire life cycle of digital platforms. So, but one thing is, is also clear, and I wanted to end uh, my presentation with this point, is that achieving the vision of a comprehensive transportation system will require the cooperation of all and every sub-industry across all these different scenarios that I was talking about. Meaning that only once each sub-industry and mode of transportation are digitalized, only then can we start and promote the digitalization of the entire industry. So a piece of advice, a recommendation for you, to realize this long-term vision, um, you will need to start by focusing on solving the most urgent problems affecting your organization and affecting your sub-industry. And then reach out, collaborate with your peers across other sub-industries to make progress against this vision of a comprehensive transportation system. Thanks again for attending this session. I uh, just wanted to add that uh, we published the results of this thought leadership exercise. Uh, and uh, while I kept this presentation at a very high level, covering key messages that we heard from tech and business leaders in the transportation industry globally, you will find a lot more insights and detailed analysis of the research, especially when it comes to specific priorities and challenges faced by each sub-industry. So I certainly encourage you to download this piece of thought leadership, and I look forward to continuing the conversation at the later stage. Thank you very much. Fairmed, a non-profit, multi-sectoral association focused on improving rail freight transportation and industrial competitiveness in Europe, sees digital transformation happening not just at the EU level, but also on a Eurasian scale. Let's hear from the organization's president, Juan Amoros, and advisor to the president, Valenti Ambros. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much to HOA's first virtual digital transformation of industry summit 
to invite us to present Fermetta's study of traffic and model shift optimization in the European Union. The background of this study basically is the situation that uh, the stagnant situation that we have in the rail freight transportation system in the European Union. In 2004, the situation was 18% of rail, 75% of uh, road, and 7% of barge. And in 2015, the situation is exactly the same, and in 2019, is also exactly the same. Then uh, it's very difficult to reach the target of the European Union in order to have 30% of the traffic in the uh, rail freight transportation in 2030. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have to take into account that uh, the impact of the freight transport on the, on the environment is massive. 275 million tons of CO2 per annum, that is 30% of the total emissions of greenhouse gases. The point is how we can reach 30% of the rail freight traffic by 2030 if the situation is fully stagnant. The only way is, frankly speaking, to concentrate the efforts where the traffic exists, and then it would be easy to pass from road to rail. This is a platform in which you can see that uh, the objectives of the study are basically to identify the freight traffic in total modes in the European Union, basically in the EU core network, and to identify where the 65% the traffic exists. And we nominate this EU backbone network. You can see in this uh, graph that uh, the extension of the EU core network is very high, close to 80,000 kilometers, and perhaps the 65% of the traffic could be concentrated in less than 20,000. 20, then this is the key point, to concentrate the efforts where the traffic exists. And this could be the only way in which we can reach at least 60% or 65% of the EU targets. The identification of the, the main points of the study basically are the section of the main corridors on the core network where the 60% of the traffic exists, the key strategic logistic hubs, the key intermodal terminals and ports that will be the backbone network, the main interconnection links, backup links and feeder links in the backbone network, the bottlenecks, and the best routes to uh, interconnect the European Union backbone network with Eurasian transport system. The basic structure and contents of the study are actions with a socioeconomic and environmental impact in the rival network considering infrastructure and operation, rolling stock, long and intelligent freight trains, and inland waterways. The socioeconomic and environmental results will be basically the required investments, the savings in BOC, vehicle operation cost, savings in transit time, savings in, in environmental issues, economic internal rate of retain, net present value, GDP impact, and potential financing, public and private, particularly in the intermodal terminals. We foresee to finish the study in the first quarter of 2022. The, we launch the Fermet Euler Declaration in order to support the study all over Europe. This is basically what I would like to say, and I invite you to support the Fermet study in order to reach the targets of the European Commission, because if not, it will be practically impossible. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In the world we live, one of the most important facts that has been occurred has been the digitalization of our lives. Digitalization will affect all the aspects of our life, including the rail world. A major opportunity for rail freight is digitalization. 
the digitalization of operations will contribute to a more efficient use of all the system and will facilitate the decisions about the necessary investments. The digitalization in the railways starts with the use of sensors for almost every element of rail infrastructure, including rolling stock, tracks, and signaling units. In the rolling stock, and especially in the wagons, the sensors will convert all kinds of parameters in electrical and transmit them to the appropriate receiver, reflecting the status of the wagon, and his function will help to the automation of several operations. The digitalization could be a good tool to improve the rail freight and help it to achieve the 30% of share in the transport in Europe by 2030. For example, the digitalization of the rolling stock will contribute to the automation of the necessary operations for the train preparation, at present done manually. First, couple and decouple the locomotive. Second, produce the wagon list. Third, couple and decouple the wagons. Fourth, perform the technical wagon inspection. Five, simple or full brake test. Six, record and process the train data. And finally, attach the sign at the end of the train. But let's just start from the beginning. We have shown how the digitalization influences freight wagons, but why the wagons? The freight wagons is one of the most important resources for rail freight transportation. In Europe, our wagons follow very old designs, designs that were developed in the 19th century. For the 21st century, we have to take a step forward, a big step. For this reason, and over recent decades, the wagon manufacturing industry has developed some important initiatives to improve the wagons through the design of all the aspects, mechanical, electrical, for the environment. One of the most important initiatives has been the 5L, launched in 2012 by the Technical Innovation Circle for Rail Freight Transport, known by its acronym in German, TIS, providing the frame for the five growth factors, combining and focusing the development and implementation of activities to have the innovative wagon by 2030. We can resume the five factors, low noise, light weight, long running, logistic capable, and LCCC oriented as logistic enable that must facilitate the integration into the supply chain. Lightweight, that offers the possibility to reduce the weight of the wagon through the choice of new materials or important change in the mechanical design. Here, we can talk about a central beam instead the classical design with a frame. Life cycle cost-oriented, looking for a rapid payback of the investments and savings and operations and maintenance. Low noise through the use of new wheel sets, design and materials. Long running, reducing failures, that means downtimes and increasing annual millage. The 5L initiative comprises four key topics that you can see on the screen, together with some of the concepts they include, telematics and sensors, innovative running gear, innovative wagon design, and cost efficiency life cycle cost oriented. These innovations will ensure that the wagons of the future will be low noise, lightweight, long running and logistics enable. The fifth L is very important, life cycle cost oriented. To evaluate the cost effectiveness and other effects of these innovations, several demonstrator projects has been launched. We can mention the SBB, DB, VTG, the innovative tank container concept of BSF, etc. The key themes for the wagons and some of the concepts they include apply to growth factors as shown in the table. 
We have added, by its importance, the digital automatic coupling that affects the factors lightweight, logistics enabled, and LCC oriented. If the sector wants to increase the competitiveness of rail freight transport significantly, the innovative freight wagon can only be the first step. We need to move forward to a more wide concept, the intelligent freight train, and apply the results of the digitalization to this new concept. The real value of the many basic innovations only becomes apparent when we focus on the freight train as a whole. This is especially true in the digitalization and automation of operational procedures. The 5L initiative comprises four key themes for the entire train that you can see on the screen, together with some of the concepts included, automatic operations, digital automatic coupling, energy and data management, and electro-pneumatic brake. In what points could the new technology collaborate in the cost reduction? Here you can see where the automation can contribute to reduce the cost. The introduction of an automatic coupling will be the central concept in the extensive automation of the rail freight sector. It will not only provide the power supply, but also data communication in the train. Combining the functions of integrated power and data boost lines will open up considerable opportunities for rail operators. It is the key to delivering leaps in efficiency that will benefit the entire rail system. In the table, you can see the different fields in the rail freight sector that could benefit from the automation because of digitalization. The fundamental part of the digitalization of freight trains is the use of a digital automatic coupling. All previous attempts to introduce an automatic coupling for the European rail freight transportation have failed, and everybody is aware of this fact. In the meantime, however, the underlying conditions for the introduction of an automatic coupling have changed radically. Technological advances mean that the focus is no longer solely on improving the occupational health and safety of shunting staff or increasing the productivity of shunting operations. On the contrary, the introduction of a digital automatic coupling for freight trains could now generate a variety of additional benefits which considerably increase the competitiveness of rail freight transportation. As a consequence of the ministerial conference, innovative rail transport Connecting Sustainable Digital, held in Berlin on 21st September 2020, the ministries of transport of all the European countries plus Switzerland signed the ministerial declaration that supports the international rail freight and specifically in the point D, they emphasize about the digital automatic coupling and the ERTMS a signaling system. Especially important is the activity Digital Automatic Coupling Delivery Program within Shift to Rail to push in the Digital Automatic Coupling implementation. The roadmap for the future could be summarized as you can see. We are in the middle of the way. The innovative wagon and the intelligent train are a reality, but under test. The creation of a competitive transport system must be a work to be done, not only by the sector, the politics must also work on it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. What is it then precisely that ports have to do to go digital? Let's look into the specifics as we travel to one of the key ports serving the Mediterranean Sea, the port of Barcelona in Spain. Gales Rua, Head of Strategic Projects and Innovation, can tell us more. Hello, my name is uh, Carla Rua. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at the Port of Barcelona and I will talk to you about uh, ports and digitalization, focus on the experience of the Port of Barcelona in its uh, digital uh, challenges. 
Let me first to uh, explain a little bit what the Port of Barcelona means, and I will do it with a video. So please uh, follow me. Okay, this video finishes with four words that uh, show our future. Sustainability, competitiveness, innovation, and of course, digitalization. So, uh, first, we want to show you why we are so interested in digitalization. Because uh, Ports at this moment has uh, many challenges, and I will show some of them. First one is that the port each time more is seen as a commodity. That means that there are many, many ports and all ports seems uh, quite similar. I mean, if you look at terminal in Barcelona or you look at terminal in Rotterdam or in Los Angeles, they will be very, very, very similar. Um, they, are, they have a yard uh, with concrete and they have cranes, all of them make in China and, and so on. So you need uh, some kind of differentiation between one port and, and another. Another problem is the overcapacity. Uh, this is especially uh, important in the Mediterranean, where many ports are in a, enlarging their, their facilities, are developing new terminals, are developing new spaces for, for cargo. So this is a very um, uh, complex uh, scenario where you have a commodity with overcapacity. So you have to do something to, 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 in order to, to avoid this, uh, this situation. The third element or the third challenge for a port is the energy transition. We have to move to a cleaner uh, fuels, uh, LNG as a transition fuel, but then we have to go to a zero emission uh, port. But also, additionally to the energy transition port, you have to talk about a material transition. Here you can talk about the uh, circular economy and the reuse of some materials that are affecting a lot the transport of raw materials like uh, aluminium or iron. Okay, But uh, probably one of the most important uh, challenges we have is the uncertainty in, 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 in the demand. And I will try to put uh, one example, for example, in the automotive industry. In the automotive industry, uh, the, the, the demand pattern is changing. People are moving from uh, to own a car to uh, other uh, alternatives like car sharing or micro mobility. So, uh, will in the future be the same car or the same transport for new cars than in the past? And what about the components of the car industry? Because an electric car has one tenth of the components of a 
a normal fuel uh, powered car. So um, we have a, a challenge here. And which are the answers, the strategic answers for the port? Well, that answers are the four words we have uh, shown in the, in the video. So more or less, we are talking about to be more sustainable, to be more competitive, and to be more competitive is focused in three big elements. Diversification of the port activity, differentiation of the port activity, and focus on your, cluster, on your customer. The third element is innovation, and the fourth element is the topic of this uh, uh, speech, uh, digitalization. I would like to talk about uh, the smart port model of the Porto Barcelona, our digital model. A few years ago, when we decided to uh, think uh, strategically from the strategic point of view in, in, in the digitalization of the port, we developed this uh, smart model. This smart model is based in what at that moment existed, in, uh, I'm talking five years ago, that was the smart city concept. When you analyze what a smart city means, you will, say, you will see that uh, they are talking about uh, the digitalization, the smartization in six big areas. These big areas are mobility, environment, governance, people, economy, and living. In a port, the problems are quite similar than in a city. We have mobility problems inside the port, we have environmental problems inside the port. There are people working in the port, so we have social problems inside our area. We have economic problems. We have governance problems. The only thing that doesn't fit exactly with a city is the living, because at least in, in, in Spain, it's forbidden to live in a port. No? The port is for uh, industrial and logistic activities, but not for housing. So we change the concept of living for the concept of logistics, because what really lives in the port is a container, is the cargo, uh, the vessels, uh, etc. So with that, and with this minor adjustment, we have considered a model that affects our smartization and our uh, digitalization. How can we understand this, uh, this uh, digitalization? Well, we can put some adjectives to that. First, this digitalization has to be sustainable in the future. We have to think that the port has to be here and the city behind the port has to be here for hundreds and hundreds of years. So we have to, uh, to maintain the sustainability of our activities. It has to be open. In the video has appeared that there are 500 companies working uh, in the port or related to the port, considering forwarding agents, uh, shipping agents, uh, custom agents, terminal operators, public administrations, etc, etc. So that means that when you are talking about digitalization, you are not talking only about the port authority author, uh, 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 digitalization. We are talking about a community digitalization. So you have to work in an open way and also in a collaborative way. You have to focus on the demand driving because at the end, uh, a port is in the middle of a logistic chain, is in the middle of a, a supply chain. So you have to see your final client and answer their demands. So our final client are the manufacturers, uh, Seat, Nissan, Inditex, Mango, Decathlon, our consumers, importers, exporters, so they are the ones who say what they need from a port. So we have to face them in order to uh, be more digital and more uh, smart. And also, you have to take into account that we are a critical infrastructure. So when we put in operation some kind of technology or new technology, it has to be proven. We can make tests, we can make uh, proofs of, of concept, but at the end, when placed in operation, you have to take into account that we are a critical infrastructure for uh, the state, so you have to uh, be sure that this will work. Imagine, uh, and it's exactly the same, the case of an airport. What happens is you test a new um, system for that control tower. It has to work, okay? 
Well, how has we organized our uh, digitalization management? As I've told you, uh, we are talking about uh, an open approach. So we have some internal uh, structures and also external uh, structures. First, we have a strategy and innovation work group uh, that uh, is an external working group uh, created in a voluntary uh, way. That means that um, uh, it includes uh, uh, final clients, uh, terminal operators, uh, shipping agents, uh, uh, academia, uh, public administrations, and so on, all the stakeholders of the port. We have also uh, an internal RDA uh, the committee uh, with all the areas of the, of the port authority. We also have a digital committee focused specifically in the digitalization of the port authority and the port itself. We have now uh, named it a, a digital manager. We have now created quite recent an innovation department also linked with digitalization. And we are in, in, in process of creating a foundation for uh, innovation in order to be more agile in the development of uh, the connection between the port community that we have to say that it's a traditional port community with uh, startups. No? So that will be the focus of this uh, future uh, created uh, foundation. But this is what we are doing. Let's go to see what other ports are doing. And in order to illustrate that, I will put you uh, two years before in the uh, 2019 Smart Port event where uh, some ports joined efforts in order to uh, identify the most digital, the most smart initiative that they have developed developed in, uh, in the past. No? So we joined uh, Rotterdam, Hamburg, Montreal, Los Angeles, uh, Barcelona, of course, and uh, Antwerp. With all these six ports, we define it, which are the concepts, which are the projects, which are the initiative that makes a port more innovative, more open, more smart, more digital. And more or less, this is the, the result. This is what each port is working on. Here you can see some of the concepts that when talking about digitalization, you have to take into account uh, in, 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 a port, uh, in a port case. We're talking about digital twins. We're talking about drones. We're talking about uh, uh, automatic gates. We're talking about uh, 5G. We're talking about uh, cyber security and cyber resilience. We're talking about uh, interfaces between the port and the city. We are talking about tracking uh, and, and how to track, uh, uh, track and trace uh, our cargo. We are talking about the optimization of uh, the port calls, uh, the, the, the vessel calls in, in the port, and so on, and so on, and so on. This is a, a lot of things, but if you try to analyze and to classify a little bit this, uh, this port initiative, this, uh, but there are a lot, this is only an example of what uh, ports are, are doing now, but uh, if you try to analyze and classify what ports are doing at this moment, you can find three big pillars. And the three big pillars in which ports are working are digitalization, energy transition, and open innovation. In digitalization, we are talking about automation, sea traffic management, track and trace, cybersecurity, machine learning, um, digital twins, so on, so on. When talking about energy transition, we are talking about LNG as a, as a fuel, new fuels, uh, hydrogen, uh, uh, onshore power supply, clean energy, smart grids, and so on. When talking about open innovation, we are talking about uh, creating an innovation hub, working with the startups, uh, new training facilities, uh, data sharing, technological partnership, collaboration, and so on. I will put some uh, simple examples that we are uh, developing in Barcelona. For example, considering the digitalization, that it's our main, main topic here, uh, we can talk about image recognition. In the Port de Barcelona, we have working with some uh, startups that are uh, working on this uh, initiative. And, and, and I explain you, and I will explain you some, some of these uh, examples. The first one is uh, an example for 
um, um, identify containers moving by, by a train. We have contacted one uh, startup, the name is Orrit, and they, have, uh, they are able to use a camera in order to see uh, focus on a train and the, the, the output we are expecting, and uh, it's going quite well, this, this pilot development, is to get a map of the train. That means each wagon with the number of the container that is uh, on that wagon. Okay, so in that way you can send this information to the destination of the train and they will know exactly where is the placement of each uh, uh, container in, in, uh, alongside the, the train. Okay. Considering other, other, uh, other of these uh, pillars uh, related to energy transition, we are working on energy islands, uh, small areas in the port in which you have consumption uh, production and storage of energy in the same place. So you need also to develop some digital elements like the smart grid in order to manage everything. And talking about uh, open innovation, probably the, the, the best example we can put is Pier 01. Pier 01 is one of the most, uh, I think it's one of the top five recognized uh, innovation hubs in, in Europe and is located, lo located inside the port of Barcelona. But if you analyze all these things that ports are doing at this moment, and we think in the technologies that we are using now, we can consider two big groups of technologies. The first one are technologies that are mostly ready, that you can start working with them now and, and that in short term, they can give you a lot of uh, profit. And then there are some other technologies that are maybe not so ready in some cases, or uh, you have to think on it before implementing. In the first group, you will talk about image recognition, artificial vision, augmented reality, virtual reality. This group of technologies are quite mature and now can give uh, very good results in, uh, in a port. I've seen one example that is the, 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 the recognition of containers in, in, uh, over a train, but also we are using uh, radars in order to see the waste management for a vessel. That means that, that uh, uh, a track full of, of uh, waste uh, uh, obtained from a vessel uh, goes under uh, a leader uh, radar and we are able to identify the kind, the size, and the weight of the, of the, of the waste uh, generated. Matching learning is another powerful tool that we have to, to develop uh, because uh, the reality is that we have a lot of information inside uh, a port, a lot of different sources of information, and probably our most important problem at this moment is how to manage the information we have. So, Artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science is one of the big topics we have to face in the next uh, future. Related to that, we are talking about to import, how to uh, represent all this information we have. No? So at this moment, for example, in the port of Barcelona, we are uh, developing our 3 uh, the uh, development of the port. We have a very uh, 2D uh, geographical information system Let's go to the next step, that is the uh, 3D uh, information system for our port. Automation uh, related to um, mainly terminals, mainly uh, gates and, 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 and facilities inside the port. And also the other uh, technology that has to be developed in the, in, the, in the next future are PCS, the Port Community System. The system that the relationship, that, that creates the relationship between all the port agents. If you go to the other side, you will find some technologies that you have to think on it. It's not so, so easy to say, oh, this is the technology I have to take. The first one is 3D printing. There are some analysis that says that 3D printing will be uh, will uh, challenge uh, about 30% of the maritime traffic. So we are very worried about 3D printing, but not now. It will happen maybe in, in five, probably 10, 
15 years. So this is nothing uh, for this moment. And manned vehicles is also uh, a question of the future. But at this moment, we are only doing some tests in that way. But no, we are not solving uh, or trying to develop new uh, facilities or new um, uh, big investments in uh, manned vehicles. Blockchain is another element we have to talk about because uh, it's a very promising technology, but it was a very promising technology last year. It was a very promising technology also in 2019 and in 2018. Until now, it's difficult to see in, in the logistic area a real working application that has all the powerful development that blockchain should, uh, should allow. No? So it will be a very powerful technology in the future, but probably we'll have to wait two or three years in order to see something uh, uh, in operation. 5G is uh, another question. I know that we are working with some pilots uh, with uh, Huawei, for example. But at the end, the main problem in a port probably is a problem for, for uh, telecommunication companies, but the main problem in a, in a port is not the, 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 the communications transmissions. We are not moving um, huge amounts of, of, of information. No? Maybe in the future, with uh, adding some uh, video and, and, and so on, uh, it will be a problem, but not now. So uh, it's something that we have to be prepared for. And, and at, uh, in reality, we are now um, investing uh, more than 10 million euros in our new uh, IT infrastructure. and. The idea is that this infrastructure uh, should be prepared for 5G. But it's for me difficult to see uh, applications in operations in the next future based on 5G. Another question is IoT, of course, or uh, ports 4.0, industry 4.0, uh, sensors. Uh, the, the, the question is that Sometimes it seems that the solution to everything is to put many sensors. And some providers come to us to say, oh, we can solve this uh, situation placing um, hundreds of sensors inside the port and, and, and then get the measures and, and so on and so on and so on. But the problem is that we have multiple sensors at this moment in the port. We are plenty of sensors in, in, in our port. Uh, plenty of IoT devices. We have uh, meteorological sensors. We have uh, sensors in the sea uh, to, to, to count uh, trucks, uh, cars, and, and so on. And we have a huge amount of information that really the problem is not to put more sensors on the port. The problem is to put, to put the right sensors and to get the right information from that sensors. Okay. To end, there is another phase of um, digitalization that I will share to you. And this has been quite accelerated with uh, the pandemics. And it's what we call the mediatization of ports. Ports are becoming each time more and more digital, more and more mediatized. That means that they are playing a new role in the social network in the uh, communications uh, and, and in the uh, marketing uh, systems. And I will put two examples for the Port of Barcelona. The first one is Peer Next. Peer Next is an innovation blog we created in 2018 that shows uh, information about innovation and uh, ports. So um, at this moment, you will find nearly 100 articles talking about digitalization, innovation, uh, new technologies, and so on, based on the port uh, developments. The second one is uh, smartports.tv. Uh, smartports.tv is the uh, evolution of the smartport uh, event I show you because the smartport event was created in 2019 but in 2020 with the pandemics we had to change to a virtual system so what we have created is a TV platform 
in order to uh, show all the contents uh, of, the, of these six, now seven posts, because Busan has joined also the, the initiative, uh, to the world. So, uh, and, and, and that's the main idea. So, the conclusion is that digitalization is a must for a port because uh, they need to change uh, the, the market rules at this moment. And also, uh, the mediatization of the port activity, the professionalization of how to show the future of the port to the world is also a topic for most of the ports you can see in, in, in this room. And that's all. Thank you very much for having me. With revenue passenger kilometers sharply declining in 2020, the International Air Transport Association forecasts that we won't see the same numbers in 2019, at least until 2024. So what does this mean for the future of airports? Former Chief Information Officer for the Hong Kong International Airport, Andy Bien, currently serves as Huawei's Chief Digital Officer for the aviation industry. Let's hear from him how innovative technologies, from artificial intelligence and 5G to the Internet of Things, are set to transform the industry. COVID has presented the aviation industry with unprecedented challenges. To many, it is a matter of survival. With the availability of vaccines, recovery is round the corner. But will things be the same as before? Or will it be something different or better? My name is Andy Bien, Chief Digital Officer, Global Aviation, Huawei Technologies. The topic of my presentation is digital transformation in aviation in the area of COVID-19. I would like to share with you a perspective that might point to a better future for the industry. It is always hard work to transform an organization, but I would advise that there is no better time to do it now. The industry needs it, and your stakeholders demand it. In airports and airplanes, empty facilities, people in masks, suspension of flights, these are common scenes particularly with international flights. Some countries are fortunate where the situation is better through the support of domestic traffic. But altogether, the industry has not faced such major disruption since its inception. Air travel has experienced tremendous growth over the years. Before 2020, passenger numbers has always grown continuously. Then, COVID strike in late 2019. Passengers and flights dropped drastically. Initially, it was thought that the situation might be under control by summer. It lasted through the whole year. Only with the availability of vaccines can travel be resumed. According to IATA, it will take almost three to four years before traffic can resume to pre-COVID level. In other words, it is not going to bounce back quickly like previous disruptions. We need the right strategy to uh, cope with this development. With all the international travel coming to a stop, something else is also happening. Ways of working has changed, some say for the long term. People have started to communicate via video conference. Work at home becomes a necessity. A centralized way of working has evolved into a more distributed means. Virtual collaboration being characterized as unfriendly before becomes adopted. A heightened sense of security under this remote working condition has been recognized. A thorough and frequent cleaning of facilities in airports and planes, including services and ventilations. Testing and monitoring of the travelers will play a crucial role in ensuring the public that travel will be safe. Not only for the individual, but also for stopping transmission of the virus across destinations. Apart from the health aspect, the industry holds high standard in operation safety, including inspection and maintenance. With less flights available, possible loss of flight personnel, the entire safety management system will need to be reviewed and reassessed. How can these risks be properly mitigated? With limited flights and passengers, revenue has been hit severely. To brace for the lengthy recovery, Planes are crowded, staff is furloughed, number of flights reduced, 
network replan, adaptive rescheduling adopted to drastically control costs. The industry has always been pursuing efficiency improvement. Now it is the time to put all those experience and new technology tools such as big data to assist financial planning, operation maintenance. Resilience of businesses have been put to the test, where cost structure needs to be reviewed, liquidity ma maintained through various means, contracts renegotiated. After the immediate concern to contain cost and remain liquid, the medium to long-term goals of the industry is to recover as quickly as possible and to compete in an environment that is reset. The need to broaden revenue sources while already being experimented will accelerate, covering both offline and online channels. Many choices to be considered. Demand for fact-based decision-making, prediction and preparation for different scenarios has never been greater. Can technology help? Service has been evolved. Now our passengers and customer wants self-service and off-site service instead of being manually served at airports and on planes. Mobile and online services again is preferred over physical ones. For the enterprises, they need to react quickly, almost in real time, to events happening. And we tend to use a lot of automation and you will see robots walking around the airports. Again, in order to work in a new situation, a good spatial management and awareness of what is happening in the facility needs to be maintained. Interestingly, recovery for aviation has been referred to as a green recovery. Use of sustainable aviation fuel, more attention to optimization of energy, use of digital technology such as big data, to plan for monitoring flights and ground operation, introduction of electric and autonomous vehicles, all points to a heightened sense of environmental protection. Negative impact of aviation to the environment has been a topic of interest for many years. With public funding of sustaining and recovering the industry, the industry will need to respond actively to those calls. Digital transformation it's not about technology. It is about business transformation supported by digital technology. Before COVID, companies have already embarked on the transformation journey. While concerns about how to implement and choosing the right technology seems to be quite common, the majority of organizations, like in this survey, have recognized the value and the urgency. Remember, this survey is taken before COVID. With all the challenges and changes required, the need has never been greater. Drawing on past experience, the critical success factor include both non-technical and technology means. For example, the culture to be data-driven, to be innovative, willing to adjust or even break all modes of operation will be essential. The capability to be agile, quickly respond to changing circumstances and have the technical expertise to turn those agility into real services that benefit customers and staff. Finally, without a reliable technology foundation, all these will just be empty talks. And what can you expect after transformation? You can sense more things than ever before because everything is connected. When they're connected, you can associate events across the entire space, entire airports, across the flight of the journey, as well as across time, because you have information about the past and the future. With the assistance of artificial intelligence and all the automation tools, your reaction to challenges will be in the speed of light. Not only can you can react quickly, you can predict the future to anticipate problems before they occur. Just like a human being, machines can now self-learn. So this capability will help them to improve continuously. With all the machines around, the focus is now more about humans. 
So human-centric design and bringing safety and joyful experience to customers and staff become forefront. So there is a very conscious decision here. You can safely stick to a traditional methodology and continue to invest in those old ways, or you can make the decision to switch to agile. In addition to this approach, there are a number of technology I would like to highlight here, which I find it to be quite relevant to our industry. First of all, connectivity as a strategy. Now we are seeing the introduction of autonomous vehicles across airports around the world. In order to allow these autonomous vehicles to be running in a safe and efficient manner, we need to have constant communication using things like 5G to connect with the vehicles to maintain its operation. At the same time, all those sensors around the airports will help us construct what we call a digital twin, which is a virtual representation of the entire physical airport, whereby all the physical activities will be reflected on the digital platform. Many airports around the world, for example, um, Malaysia, Bahrain, and Hong Kong, has been starting the smart airport transformation using advanced communication technology such as Wi-Fi 6, ELTE, and also enterprise-grade 5G networks. These are some real-life examples of how airports have been using connectivity to help them run a smart airport. Another interesting development is on optical communications. Passive optical network provides a cost-effective communication solution saving both space and money. It also speed up deployment, simplify maintenance, and re relating to our uh, mandate to be greener, it takes less energy because it's optical. The second technology that we need to look at is the cloud. Previously, we have all kinds of systems working in silos. They are fragmented and also they are, we have to spend a lot of effort to make them secure. And with all the increasing threat of cyber security, this is becoming a great burden. With cloud as a platform, facilities will be managed centrally. And with all the item and data being centralized in one place, then we can effectively break the silos of different vertical systems. At the same time, enough attention and resource can be dedicated into the cloud platform to make it more secure. On the money side, with cloud, you can minimize your capex spending. Instead, you can have elastic opex spending, so when you only have to pay for what you use. I think these are technology not only can improve the capability of you, you your organization, it also re relates very well to the COVID challenge. Now, with Sunjan Airport, there is an example where they, you have been using cloud and uh, artificial intelligence to have a platform whereby all the activities uh, at the airport will be seen from the operation center, what we call an integrated operation center. Sensing, visualizing, and facilitating real-time decisions. Activities on, in the sky, activities on the ground, all the major uh, metrics will be observed in one place. Finally, artificial intelligence. In the future, we expect artificial intelligence as an assistant, helping human beings making good decisions. To make that happen, we need a AI platform. We also need the algorithm to run on those platforms to help them make real decisions. For that, we need an advanced, open, high-performance, and cloud-native platform to enable an innovative partner ecosystem where a lot of developers can help work on those applications for the industry. Again, in some airports, they have been using AI to help them, for example, in this case, manage their air bridge and stands. They can improve the average usage rate 
in the case of Shenzhen, the experience of 2.5 million travelers has been improved so that they don't need to go to buses to go to remote stands. These are some of the uh, possible consequences of using AI in the right way. Of course, it takes the entire industry to work together. So I think the ecosystem and the partnership is important. As you can see here, the partners do not just include technology partners. The customers are co-creating with technology suppliers to work on the digital transformation so that their technology can be applied in the right way. So in summary, we will recover from COVID-19. However, this will require a total rethink of the industry. Digital transformation has already been a, a very important topic. Now, it's being more urgent than ever. And we need to base the transformation on a secure and reliable technology platform. Again, I talked about agility. Technology-wise, connectivity, cloud, and AI are key drivers. I would like to remind everyone that digital transformation is not about technology. It's business transformation supported by digital technology. And through this transformation, aviation can again be a safe, financially and environmentally sustainable industry again. I would like to close with the following quotations from Forbes. It's imperative for enterprises to build in the necessary operational resiliency to survive this new reality. COVID-19 pandemic has showcased the value of IT and digital transformation and organizations should use this time to accelerate the transition. And from Huawei, the vision is to bring digital to every person, home and organizations for a fully connected, intelligent world. I think this vision is more timely than ever. And from our Secretary General from the United Nations, COVID-19 recovery offer a chance to change course I think we should value and use this opportunity for the better. Thank you. And with that, we've reached the end of today's session. Thank you for being with us, no matter where you are in the world. Thanks again, and we wish you a safe journey always, and we look forward to seeing you next time.